let's continue from where we left off. When they start worrying about any minor little thing, which is generalized anxiety disorder, then they pick up on all these anxiety disorders at one go, it becomes a package for them. And when it becomes that package, it becomes difficult for you to support them. That is when it gets into the clinical state because they are worried about any seemingly minor thing. They long for attention, approval, and encouragement from others. So you see where it becomes very delicate. When you are longing, when you are craving, when you are seeking attention and approval and encouragement from people all the time, it means you can't function on your own. And that is a serious position or situation that an individual will be or should be. Because you can't seek for endorsement and approval and attention and encouragement all the time. You need to have that confidence in yourself that, you know what, this is what I've done and it's good for me. And, and even if I'm not looking good in terms of aesthetics, you know, you have the confidence that no one is perfect. But if you are seeking to have the approval and the attention and the encouragement from people all the time as a kid, then there's a problem. That is when a parent or that is when a teacher most preferably pick on that and support the child through communication. Ask the child what the problem is. Ask the child why that sort of thinking, why the child is exhibiting that trait. Maybe the child will be able to air their concerns and then you can be able to support them. So the only difference is that they are more likely to worry about things that relate to them. That is the only difference. So when it comes to the children, when it comes to kids, things that are related to them, they worry much more than things that are outside their reach. So that is the only difference between the adult and the kids when it comes to generalized anxiety disorder in reference to, in relationship to the childhood anxiety disorder. So those things may include grades, bullying, getting hurt, storms. The symptoms of OCD include repetitive or compulsive behavior. So when grades and bullies and getting hurt in school becomes a problem, when they are not hitting their targets, when they are being bullied by other kids, and the, the relevant authorities are not doing anything if they are reported, and if they are not getting any support from the teacher or from the friends and families, then the child internalizes that situation and they become timid over time. They, don't, they are not able to express themselves. They are not able to have that confidence to say anything or to answer even a question in class. And that really goes a long way to bring them down. So you can see that their education or their, you know, what they are learning, their curriculum, and the uh, examination, the grades begin falling and falling and falling till so it becomes apparent that they are not they aren't doing well so they need some support and you don't want to wait to that last minute that you have it checked out as a teacher please try and pick on those things and help the children move on with their uh, educational curriculum so the symptoms of OCD as a measure of what we are saying is repetitive and compulsive behavior. If that person has developed that clinical um, background of what is happening as I'm discussing, then you can realize that if the person is in class, they might be chewing on their pen or they might be fidgeting in a very repetitive manner or they might be doing something in a very repetitive way. So as a teacher, you are there to be vigilant and observant. Pick on that and know that, no, there's something not right with your student or with your people in class. 
that is when you go in and intervene and try to help your people because you, we don't want a generation of adults that have got anxiety disorders clinical disorders how is or how is the country going to move forward when the generation are full of clinical disorders like anxiety so as teachers please do well and spot these things and support the children so that they wouldn't grow into adulthood with that sort of clinical anxiety let's carry on it is more common for children whose parents have anxiety disorders to attain an anxiety disorder than it is for children whose parents do not have anxiety disorders so sometimes it can be pathological sometimes it can be genetical sometimes they can pick from the traits at home because their parents are exhibiting that from when they were infant they can pick up those traits and begin to sort of externalize it begin to act that way and for all you know is going to develop into the clinical anxiety disorder so those that are coming from dysfunctional families sorry to say that but sometimes that is how it is parents with disorders sometimes pass it on to their kids involuntarily and unconsciously the kids in the house pick all these traits and then when they go out they out there they exhibit it they show it they 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 demonstrate it for people to know that things ain't right with them so please teachers you are at the forefront of this war of this fight of this battle make sure you help our next generation so that we have the good generation of critical thinkers who will help a nation thank you let's carry on um, anxiety disorders are also more common among little girls than among little boys several methods of treatments have been found to be effective in children of anxiety disorders the reason why it's common among little girls is that girls are much more conscious of themselves because when they are growing into adulthood their body begins to change they begin to overlay they begin to menstruate they begin to develop breasts they begin to develop some hormonal changes in their body in their system much more earlier than the boys so it becomes a problem when there is no adult to coach to mentor to nurture that little girl because they go through anxieties of all these things and i really don't want to go into deeper into into that deep area because we are just heading on the disorder we don't want to go into that puberty age and all that and that triggers the anxiety of most of the little girls because some of them develop at a very young age some of them have their menses or their menstruation around eight nine and all that so they develop a lot earlier and quicker than the boys so that is the reason why they have been tagged as having more reason to develop anxiety than the boys because they go through bodily change physical changes biological changes more at a more earlier age than the boys so like adults children may undergo psychotherapy we're talking about the treatment because we've moved from the sort of characteristics to the treatment like adults children may undergo psychotherapy cognitive behavioral therapy or counseling that's why i'm saying that teachers can even start before they refer if it's not going and if it becomes persistent it be becomes very excessive it becomes worrying then you refer that individual to a professional 